What's up guys? Bilingual Duelist here. Currently sitting here at the Sumida River. Uh, very very nice. Um, it's already October but we still have here about 25-26 degrees. Today it's a little bit cloudy so it's a little bit easier to go out. You don't sweat immediately. It's crazy. In Germany we have already like autumn temperatures and here in Japan it's still kind of late summer. And yeah, I arrived here in Japan. The first week was pretty stressful. We had to arrange a lot of things because we are actually trying to find an apartment and all of that kind of shit. Uh, all the ward office uh, walks and so on. And yeah, you know the drill if you have ever moved. And yeah, you can imagine if you move to a different country, it's even more difficult. Let me take the mask off. Uh, really don't have to wear it right here. Um, yeah, in Japan actually people wear masks everywhere when they're outside, it's crazy. Even if you're just walking outside, they wear masks. But yeah, not here uh, to complain right now because yeah, finally today I'm able to have a time off. Uh, time off to have a day off actually. And I will go to Akihabara of course and yeah, try to find some deals, try to assess the situation what is going on in japan right now how are the prices are they going down are they going up yeah and so on and yeah of course i will take you guys with me so yeah stay tuned for a new card hunt episode the second time this year in akihabara and yeah let's get going It's really good to be back here and yes, while I'm showing you the footage I filmed today, I will talk a little bit about Yu-Gi-Oh card prices here in Japan as of right now, which is October 2022. So comparing to the western market where everything is cooling down after the huge boom in 2021, things here in Japan are actually a little bit different. Since 2020, prices are going up and up and up here in the OCG and it is really difficult to assess why this is the case but I have an assumption and it is probably because collectors here in Japan have a little bit of a different mindset when we talk about collecting in general. There simply must be way more people who enjoy owning cards and growing their collections instead of selling them right away when they are at their all time highs resulting in less cards in the market which further drives the prices up. Additionally, there is a lot of foreigners who really enjoy the OCG exclusive cards whether it is Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball etc. On the one hand, I'm really happy about this situation because this means that we have far less investors in the market here in Japan and this also means that the prices are likely to stay pretty stable. But on the other hand, this also implies that card prices are less likely to crash down like they did in the West. All in all, I think that Yu-Gi-Oh! is in a really healthy spot at the moment, at least when we talk about vintage cards. Unfortunately, this also means that new people who just started collecting OCG cards are having a little bit of a trouble here because card prices are actually pretty high already and therefore they have a quite big entry barrier here. But yeah, there is also cheap alternative cards. I mean, of course the Holy Grails are really, really expensive by now, but there is also alternatives and you can also find vintage cards for really good prices here in Japan, especially if you're not trying to get the mintiest cards and mintiest copies here. You can really find yourself some really, really nice cards and start your collection out. So don't be afraid to start OCG cards in 2022. It's never too late to actually start and if there is a card you really really want you can just try to find someone who is willing to trade or you have to partially sell cards on card market or eBay to have the funds to fund your new OCG card. And yeah this is mainly the heart of a trading card game right? Trading, selling and buying new stuff is what it is all about.
All right, guys, we are now back from Akihabara and I quickly wanted to show you what we bought today. And yeah, as you can see, some of the cards even have the price tag on them. And yeah, let's start with the cheaper ones here. We have the Shiba Warrior Taro here uh, for 80 yen. I think he's a pretty good steal. I mean, um, the condition might not be perfect, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's still near mint. And yeah, maybe that corner a little bit thing, but yeah, as you can see, these cards are not in terrible condition. These are of course not perfect, but they are still very good uh, for a binder collection. And that's where I will be using them for, or maybe I will sell them. I do not know right now. And this card here is a very old card from the EX starter deck. And I am trying to complete a full set of these. So yeah, I needed this card. So this is basically not for sale and yeah let's continue with one more card from the anniversary pack uh, we have the celtic guardian here in his alternate art very cool card here as well again 80 yen is roughly about yeah 50 cents maybe so these are extremely cheap and yeah i found them in a pretty hidden corner um, of the card shop i uh, don't know remember which one it was specifically but um, you will always find good deals here and there in any card drop if you just look for a long time and yeah here is one more card i'm collecting for the starter box project if you do not know what the starter box project is basically i'm trying to recreate a whole starter box and yeah find every card i need and i will sell it as a complete package there will be an upcoming video soon about the starter box project so stay tuned for that also atn and yeah, now we continue with a little bit more expensive card. Of course, we have here a Blue Eyes White Dragon from the History Archive collection. And yeah, look at this card, guys. It's a really cool artwork. And in the TCG, we got him in the newest tin also as a prismatic. And yeah, here in Japan, he was an ultra rare. And yeah, this card actually is way more rare than our version. There is only two or three ultra rares in the whole case here in Japan. And the whole case was made out of 24 half boxes and yeah that's why these cards are way more expensive and way more rare than our tcg variants here uh, got a card in a very good condition costed me around 75 euro so yeah pretty good deal and yeah this will go to my card market selling account as well okay guys and yeah we are now at the final yeah category of our card hunt here today um i have here some rule cards because yeah you can see this is not a regular Yu-Gi-Oh card and here on the back you can see there is some japanese text written on and yeah these are basically rule cards and you were able to get these from the bandai card vending machines i think when you bought a pack there from the machine you got a rule card as well and there is actually quite a lot of different uh, rule cards and yeah, I was able to find a few. Um, these are actually not that easy to find in Akihabara. Uh, I know only one or two places which sometimes have a couple of these. And yeah, I was lucky uh, that nobody else was hunting these, I guess. And yeah, I got me uh, this very cool artwork. This is the artwork used on the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon booster pack here in Japan. And yeah, these um, are also not that expensive and I really like to use them in my binder because if I have a yeah empty space because I'm missing a card um, I just put these rule cards and these look actually pretty pretty cool. And yeah, this is the first one. We have another one here. Um, this year is the artwork from the very first Yu-Gi-Oh pack, the volume one pack, just with the blue background. I think this looks really really cool with the blue, blue eyes and the blue background here. And yeah, I really like the vintage retro kind of flair these, car these cards are giving off. Okay, there's many more as you can see. We have here a Yugi and all these artworks are somewhat related to some booster packs uh, in the OCG. For example, this one here I think is actually the artwork from uh, volume 5 just with a red background here. Usually it would be a green background. And yeah, these are just extremely nice additions to your binder, I would say. And yeah, these are also very collectible. Here we have the uh, basically the same artwork here from these uh, very first booster pack. 
and yeah this time with the uh, standard uh, brownish beige color here in which also the pack was printed and one more here we have shadi here in the background so this is also a little bit um yeah related to the volume 5 booster pack just as you can see here yugi is blocking off the other yeah shadow kinder shadis here and yeah also very cool and yeah i use them a lot in my binders and the final rule card we were able to score today is this card here um i do not know if this is also a booster pack artwork probably it is but i do not know out of my head and yeah this is basically all i got from today's card hunt i mean i was not as exactly looking for specific cards today was just looking for good priced cards and yeah basically for deals and i think we scored pretty well because yeah these rule cards costed me around 500 to 600 yen each and yeah as you can see most of these cards were also really really cheap so yeah if you're on a budget and you want to buy stuff from akihabara you definitely can do that and yeah if you're in japan and you are in akihabara just go into any store and just search every corner uh, look through these whole card boxes they have with a lot of different cards and yeah of course these kinds of cards you won't find in there because these are too valuable but for example these cards here which are actually not super cheap in the tcg or especially when you buy them in europe i mean even for this card probably i can charge around six seven euros in in germany so yeah you can find deals anywhere here in akihabara so yeah just watch my akihabara card hunts and you know where to go and yeah i hope you enjoyed this little and quick card hunt today and we will see us very, very soon in a new video your bilingual duelist ciao